Hi, everybody. Uh, so today I wanted to discuss and share with you um, an examination of a new program that I've come across called Textero. Textero is a essay generating or essay helper um, tool that's available on um, online. So um, let me share my screen. Okay, so here you you can see Textero. It's uh, the website is called uh, t e x t e r o dot a i, uh, and you can see right on the banner here it says write better with AI, and it, you can just start right there. But before we start and before I demonstrate or walk us through what it does, let's just scroll down. It says inspire your creativity, beat procrastination, <laughs> save time, get results, um, and it's actually saying it's better than chat GPT. So that's an interesting claim. And we'll get to that, I think. Uh, it can generate an essay structure. It can do your coding assignments. And it, it can also um, generate presentations. Um, and what, you know, if you click on the fact, it says it's a way of generating ideas for academic writing. How does it work? It says it uses advanced AI technology. So it doesn't say that it is using it, this is not like many other plugins or programs like ChatDoc or uh, Humata or like ChatPDF. It's not a program that's saying we are using the API that's an uh, interface for ChatGPT. So this is saying it's using its own AI. So that's interesting, I think. So let's test it. Um, I'm going to I'm going to say, it asked me, what do you want to write about? I, I would like to write about criminology, which is an area I'm familiar with. So it's generate for free. Uh, here you have to put in your subject field, criminology. Um, and then in terms of, in terms of a description, um, I would, I would like it to write um, um, an essay about racial profiling and its use by police services. Uh, maybe uses and problems. Uh, and here I can select up to four pages and you can only select up to four sources. So that's interesting. So it, it's actually saying it will find sources for you um that are um i guess legitimate unlike chat gpt which as we know will generate false um or some it's a combination chat gpt generates both true or factual citations but also makes up or as or as is often referred to it hallucinates um uh, citations so i selected apa style generate so here it will say it's analyzing my task. And then since I've done it before, before making this video, uh, it usually will say it will take up, it'll take a couple of minutes to generate your essay, right? So I've generated one before, uh, just a, a few minutes earlier. Um, yeah, see, it says approximately time two minutes. So this is the one I just generated basically five minutes before I, I started this video. So let's preview that. You can also download it. I, I didn't click on download. So it's opened in Google Docs. Um, and here it says, oh, oh I, I've skipped it. It actually tells you, you can put your name, your university. So the suggestion is this is for university students, I think, or university researchers. Well, no, it says course name. So I guess it's quite clear that it's saying you're writing something for a course. And then it says the intro, racial profiling is a controversial practice been used by law enforcement for decades, defined as using race, okay. One paragraph, historical context, the historical roots of racial profiling can, can, can be traced to slavery and colonialism and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I didn't say for it to look at Jim Crow laws or the American context, but it's defaulted to looking at uh, racial profiling against uh, African-American. So I guess it has a, an American bias um, or proclivity for American um, context. Um, there are several problems with racial profiling, leads to wrongful arrest, true. Uh, failures of racial profile device being 
the use of racial profile has improved been effective at reducing crime rates nor making communities safer, which is true, I think. So all of this, I think, is true. It's, it's very basic. And you can see that for each section that it's, it's really just writing one paragraph for each section. So I'm not so sure if this is a very good essay in that sense. Uh, you can't have an essay made of uh, sections of an essay made of single paragraphs that are not really, they're not really segued, right? They're not laddering in, this paragraph is not laddering into the next example. I'm not sure if it is. Anyways, so you can see that. So it's not bad. Um, and then it says recommendations. It's interesting it goes to recommendations. Um, in conclusion, racial profiling continues to be a significant issue in law enforcement around the world. It undermines public trust and leads to wrongful arrests as well as miscarriages of justice. I mean, it's interesting, it's looking at mainly American context, but then it's making these, if you will, global claims around racial profiling, which I think is, you know, geographically and historically incorrect, or it's it's um, overreaching in terms of what it's trying to argue. Anyway, so, so there, there's that. So, yeah, I mean, I think in that sense, it's very much um, basic. I'm not so sure if it's writing an essay um, that is usable, but it is certainly a start to an essay. I, I, can, I think in terms of its promise, it said it's trying to help you with your procrastination. So I guess it could help someone with their procrastination. But I think this is so basic that as it stands with these five pages, um, this is probably better for, if you will, elementary or high school. Um, but if you did a bit more iteration um, and used it as your first draft, I think it can be useful for um, university students. But what is also interesting here, you can see, is you can also order human editing, it says. <laughs> so I guess that's driving you in that sense to hire a writer. Um, so is this a gateway? Is this like a gateway drug to academic uh, integrity issues? I mean, it already is an academic integrity issue in the sense that you're asking a machine to generate your first draft, let's say, of an essay, but you can also take it to the next level, or it's in fact leading you uh, to say you can hire someone to write. But here it says, sorry, no experts in criminology at the moment. We apologize. We couldn't find an expert in criminology to edit your paper. Please try again later. So um, is this the business of Textero? Is this the business of driving you towards hiring uh, a writer uh, and breaching academic integrity? Uh, or is it just saying that you can just come here as a one-stop shop and you can try and start your essay? If you don't like it or if you need help, you can, uh, you can get a, I guess, a private tutor, right? Um, what is also interesting is when you click on writing tools, not only can it generate essays, it can also generate structure, or if you will, um, uh, an outline, right? So uh, the structure is um, make an uh, outline for an essay on racial, I'll just leave it at that. Services. So it's also trying to think about that, um, but, uh, and it also will say it's gonna take, a, oh, well, it's much faster today. Okay, oh no, it's not gonna take two minutes. Um, there's your um, um, int introduction, your body, I guess, A and B, and then a conclusion. So background information. Again, I'm not sure if that's that useful yet, Sure, you should have background about racial profiling as an outline for a paper. You should discuss what, what racial profiling is, how it takes place, yes. Uh, you should tackle racial profiling in, in the sense of solutions, uh, and then so-called so -called summarizing the possible. Not very useful, I think. This is quite boilerplate in terms of uh, an essay structure. Um, and what I did was, before I... Um, started this video, I also went uh, and tried to ask the same question to just chat GPT. I need an outline for an essay. The essay should discuss the problems and failures of racial profiling as used by police services. Please provide an outline. So it does, right? So it said, sure. So this is the outline by chat GPT. It's not as detailed, but I think in some respects as an outline, it might be more useful than the structure 
um, that uh, the essay structure generator gave me. Um, and then, of course, I could also reiterate, I can say rewrite with a focus on Canada and a longer description for each bullet. And so it does do that. It makes it longer. Um, and then I, you can also iterate again. You can say, now can you flesh out more details of the bullets that you provided? Um, and then it is very compliant. It says, sure, uh, because I ask about the origins of racial profiling in Canada. And then it says, sure, it does do that. And then it also gives it the structure in three, in, in, th in, a, in a structure of three logical parts. So I think in that sense, um, it, it, the essay structure generator in Textero is inferior, of course, to ChatGPT. Um, in terms of um, in, in terms of the um, citations, though, I think that's what's interesting. So I did look at the citations, for instance, when I uh, I, I looked at this. Is this an actual citation? I mean, that's the question, right? So um, if I'm not mistaken, um, I did find it um, in, um, well, I guess it's not here, but I did find it and that, that it, um, it is not a hallucinated citation uh, and that it is a real citation, right? In the sense of it, um, in the sense of Textero telling you it's going to actually find you citations. Um, what is, Interesting about Textero is it in the, it, it it gives you the citations within the um, within the essay that you've requested, but you can also ask it to find um, essays, uh, sorry, references in general. So it can also be, if you will, a live research engine. Um, so racial profiling in Canada. I think that's what I asked of it, and this should be not too long. Um, yeah, so there, there you go. Uh, it's able to find, from what I understand, only it's limited. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, there's no other button here that says more. So I counted, and I think it's only able to provide you with 20 citations. Um, and here it's given me something from 2019, 2017, 2019, 2017. So I can even be more specific. I can say in Canada, uh, let's say in 2022, let's ask about you know, up until last year. It will uh, refine that search. And then it does find, here you go, citations or articles related to racial profiling in Canada in 2022. Is it using a kind of Boolean search? Is it using, is it scraping the internet? I, I, I was curious about how it's finding that, those, those um, citations. And so I put the same, if you will, the same um, uh, library search into um, the University of Toronto Library, the U of T Library, which is uh, you know available to anyone um, online. You have to be, of course, a student or uh, a, a staff uh, to access the actual materials online. But in terms of search, it's free, right? So you can go to any basically university library and search for free. And I'm just using U of T because it's a it's a major research library. Um, and it's able to find similar citations, but not the ones that Textero found. And then I also went to um, Google Scholar and I did the same thing. I tried to search for uh, racial profiling and I, I actually added a bit more stop and search. Um, um, I got rid of that. So it's also able to find different citations. So I, th I thought that was interesting that these citations are very different all in 2022, different than the ones through library search and through Google Scholar search, they would be different. So this is a kind of a different animal. I don't know how it's uh, doing its search. But what is useful for Textero is that it does show the abstract. If you click here, it shows the abstract, um, which I think for Google Scholar, it's not as good in the sense it's only showing part of it and you'd have to actually, it doesn't actually show you the full um, abstract. Here, it as part of the abstract, if I clicked on this article here, um, you can see a, a larger citation and uh, where it's been uh, cited, and then here, uh, the, the, the abstract here. But I, I think that th there is something, I think, useful um, uh, about uh, Textero in the sense that you can look at these 20 arguments, uh, sorry, 20 articles, 
and then and then just click and it shows you the um, you can stay within the page and it shows you uh, the abstract you can also click on open so what is interesting about Textero is it's finding only citations or documents that anyone can use so PDFs that are freely available online so here let's click on another one um, oh yeah and here also for some articles it, it also allows you to copy the DOI um, here uh, share state troopers and spillover effects of immigration police and if you want to look at that you can click on that and it does open the document right Texas A&M University so you can get the full access to the document which is similar, I guess, to Google Scholar in the sense that you can click on some documents that it finds that's available online, but some are not, right? This is not available. This is available, this is available, this is available, right? So like you can click on that a PDF in Google Scholar and it will um, bring you the, uh, the document. Of course, you can't do that through the uh, library search in U of T unless you were um, a staff or um, a student. So I think, you know, in summary, I guess, Textero, uh, you know, as this, I'll go back to the homepage, you know, Textero as this thing that advertises um, the writing better with AI, I don't think it's as good an AI in terms of writing as good prompts in ChatGPT if you wanted to use that. Um, I'm not even so sure if it would be as good as Copilot in Microsoft Word, uh, I mean that's I don't know yet. I have I've played around with Copilot in in MS Word, um, but I haven't fully figured out how to use it for, if you will, um, as this essay Copilot. Uh, the citations I think are very useful uh, in Textero. As I showed you, it's able to bring up the abstracts, and then also it's only finding, if you will, twenty articles, um, depending on your search string. 20 articles related um, that, that are freely available online. The problem, I think, with the essay writing, unlike ChatGPT and other, if you will, essay writing tools online, is it's, it keeps you on these rails. So uh, it, it's very limited, as you can see. I'll go back to this. Uh, I'll go back to this essay. It's very limited in the sense of it's um, it's 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 very. It's very rigid in terms of its writing and in terms of its format. So I'm not so sure if it's that interesting. I'll, I'll stop to share. Um, and so I do think it might be good for elementary school or it might be good for high school students. Um, but I'm not so sure, you know, it's very good for university writing. It certainly, I think, is of very little use to a university scholar or, uh, or, or even a graduate student or an academic scholar. Um, so, um, Textero, I guess it's useful at, if you want to help, if you were procrastinating or if you had some type of writer's block, but the results, as you can see, are very limited. I think the power of it or the strength of it is it's able to find, if you will, um, academic references online, uh, and provide you, uh, with documents that are readily available online. Right, so PDFs that are freely available, but otherwise it's not it's not any better than Google Scholar or using ChatGPT or other, if you will, writing aids like Microsoft Copilot um, within a Word. Um, so there you go. Um, that's my thoughts on Textero um, uh, essay generating uh, program, which is available online. See you next time. Thank you.